All right, so the first thing we're going to do is to build a simple Hello World web application, okay? Now, normally we'd go into IntelliJ and tell IntelliJ to create a new project, yada, yada. However, with Spring applications, there is actually what many may consider to be a shortcut to getting started. And I'm going to show you that now. So the first thing we're going to do is to open up a browser and we're going to navigate to start dot spring dot io and then hit return and that brings us to a little web application that the spring developers have created which is out on the internet and what this application will do is we can tell it what type of spring application we want to build and what types of features or functionality we want to have in this application and then this little wizard here will generate a mostly empty project that contains all of the add-on Spring Framework projects that we need according to the functionality that we said we wanted all in one go. And, and that'll be a downloadable zip file. And then we'll download that zip file, unzip it onto our computer wherever we want, and then we can go into IntelliJ and simply open that project. So it will open into its own project, okay? So it's just a nice, convenient way that isn't tied to any specific browser that we can create a new project from scratch. We don't have to do it this way, but this is one of the easiest ways to get going. Okay, so the first thing we'll do here is to make our selection. So, We've played a little bit with Maven and Gradle. I may have mentioned before, I personally prefer Gradle a little bit over Maven, though Maven certainly came before Gradle. And there was a long period of time, years in fact, where I was a huge proponent of Maven, but then Gradle came along and eventually I kind of decided I liked Gradle a little, a little better, mostly just because Gradle is able to describe what is needed for a project more concisely than can be done with, with Maven. So I'm personally picking Gradle, but it doesn't matter that much. I do encourage you though to follow me so that we're all on the same page. And of course, we'll make our language Java. Now I will point out though, that the Spring Framework has fantastic support for using it with other languages such as Kotlin and Groovy. But we'll be sticking with Java in this Java course. And then we also need to decide what version of Spring Boot we want. We won't be using any of the experimental cutting edge features of Spring Boot as of the time of this recording. So for now, I'm picking 2.6.3. Now, at the time when you're watching this video, if there are stable newer versions of Java, such as 2.7, which is already looking like it's about to be maybe a, a release candidate or something. So if there's 2.7 here and then up here you're seeing 2.8 M1 or something like that, don't worry about it. You can, you can pick 2.7. You don't have to look for 2.6.3. Hopefully by the time that they have stabilized version 3.0, I may have gone into this video or updated it with a little note to tell you that it's okay to pick version three. Okay, and then down here, we'll have to tell it a little bit of metadata about our project. This may look familiar to you because these are the same basic questions that we are asked when we create a new Maven or Gradle project within IntelliJ. So we'll have to specify a group. I will, as usual, use my own company name. You could use your last name followed by your first name, whatever you want to do, or you can use my company name, it doesn't matter, or your own company name, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so I will do com.neutrinosys. And then for the artifact, that's basically the name of the project effectively. So I think what we're going to build ultimately is going to be a UI version, uh, a UI web application version of our people database. So I'm thinking maybe I'm going to call this people db hyphen web because it'll be a web application. Now you can feel free to call it whatever you like though. All right, and these other fields are optional. I guess I'll put something in here though. A people crud application because eventually we'll make this do create read update delete functions all within a browser okay and then finally we're just seeing the total the combined name of this 
com neutrinosis people db dash web and that's fine now it's also asking us how will we want this application to be packaged when we're done with it so that it can be executed i'm not going to get into a whole lot of the details here but basically our choices are a jar file or a war file if, it, if we choose a jar file, what that will mean is when we build the final version of our project and we are ready to run it somewhere, if you're a Windows user, a jar file is somewhat equivalent to an EXE or an executable, okay? It's a standalone file that contains everything that's needed to make that application run, okay? For the most part. I mean, you do have to have Java installed on, on a computer still, but, but other than that, it pretty much has everything in it. A war file, on the other hand, is something that is meant to be deployed into what is called an application server. We won't be going too deep into that right now, but suffice it to say, we're going to be choosing a jar file, which tends to be the easier, more self-contained style of packaging. And then for the version of Java, why not go ahead and use the latest since we've been learning how to use the latest features anyway. So I'm going to target Java 17 as of the time of this recording. And again, if Java 18 or whatever is out by the time you're watching this, and that's one of your options there, you can probably feel safe to go ahead and select whatever that latest version is. Okay, and now we get to choose what kinds of functionality we want this application to have, okay? So you can either click up here on this Add Dependencies button, or you can click, if you're on Mac, uh, Command B. I'm guessing for Windows, it's probably Control B. I don't know what you'll be seeing if you're on a Windows computer. So I'm going to do the Command B there. Okay, and so now we get to choose from a long, long list of features and capab capabilities. And I'm just going to scroll through this just so you get an idea. I mean, there's just a ton of functionality that the Spring Framework supports. And honestly, I'm certain that not everything that the Spring Framework fully supports or the ecosystem of the Spring Framework is even added in here, although a whole lot of the most popular things are. So we're going to just start at the top and just work our way down because we're going to pick a number of things. We'll start here with the Spring Boot Dev Tools. And I guess I'll try to explain very, very briefly what each of these will do, okay? So the Spring Boot Dev Tools package will allow us to develop our application in the IDE while it's running. And whenever we make small changes to the application, even while it's running, so we'll be able to see the application in a web browser, right? That will be our finished product but we will be able to make changes while the application is running and those changes will take effect much more quickly than if we did not use the Spring Boot DevTools add-on, okay? So it basically just allows us to have a much quicker round trip between making a change and then seeing that change take effect in the browser. So to select that, I'm going to hold down on the Command button and click on that. That way I can select additional features without having to come back into this little pop-up window here, okay? The next feature we're gonna select is Lombok. So if you'll recall, we learned how we could create both classes and records, and records in Java are a relatively new feature of Java that allows us to create lighter weight classes with less boilerplate. So we don't have to explicitly write out the setters and the getters and the two string and the equals and the hash code methods in particular, or even the constructor for that matter. Those all essentially just get generated for us. Lombok is an older technology that actually implements a very similar set of capabilities for traditional classes rather than records, okay? And it does this by giving us annotations that we can place on our class, usually at the top of the class, and then the framework itself will generate those getters and setters and constructors and all of these kinds of things for us. Now, one major difference between Lombok and using records, though, is that records are final, okay? And because they are final, we often can't utilize them in the same ways that we would want to use a class. So, for example, if we created an instance of a class and then later on we wanted to make changes to properties of that 
of that instance. You can't do that with a record, but you can do that with classes. And so by combining Lombok with classes, we kind of get the best of both worlds. We get the ability to avoid having to write out all of that boilerplate code like you can do with records, but the instances of our classes don't have to be final. All right, so we'll, we'll, I'm going to hold down on the command key and choose Lombok. And by the way, if you forget to hold down on the command key or, or I guess maybe control for Windows and Linux users and this window goes away, in fact, here, I'll just show you real quick. Like this, don't worry about it. You can just click on the add dependencies button again to get back in here, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to grab is Spring Web. And that represents that Spring MVC framework that I mentioned before. So this is what we need to select if we want to build a web application, right? An application that runs in a web browser. All right, so we'll go ahead and select that, okay? Then we'll scroll some more. The next thing we want is under this template engines, we want to select Timeleaf. Timeleaf is going to be a little difficult for me to explain, but it has to do with web application development and basically making templates that re represent the web pages that we are going to be making. So I will explain more about that when we get into it, but we, we want to use that. So I will select Timeleaf and then scroll some more. And now we're getting into the database related technologies. So for this, we're going to choose Spring Data JPA. So Spring Data JPA is Spring's framework that will enable us to interact with a relational database without having to write much code at all. And I mean, like, we basically almost won't write any code. In fact, it's, it's really, really magical. So we will select that, okay? And we will scroll some more. And we will want to use the H2 database again. Now there, again, are many databases that we could use, but I want to keep this relatively simple. If we wanted to use one of the other databases, we'd have to all, I'd, I'd have to also teach you how to either install one of those databases or use a technology called Docker or something like that, where, where you could kind of stand up a data, a proper database server. And I really don't want to get into all of that in this course right now. So we will keep this relatively easy as we did in the last section. And we will just use the H2 database again. And, and, and at any rate, you have some familiarity with it now, not that you'll need to get too deep into it in this section. All right. So we'll choose H2. And down here under IO, we also want the validation framework. This will come in handy when we're making web forms and we want those forms to be able to validate the data that we're entering. So if we say that someone has to enter their first name, for example, and they leave that field blank, we don't want them to be able to submit that form. We want them to be stopped and be forced to, and give them some feedback telling them, hey, you can't submit this form with a blank first name. You have to have the first name field filled out, things of that sort. So that's what this validation framework will, will give us. So let's select that. And that's finally it, okay? So we can, uh, you can, I'm just gonna click over here and now we can see all of the dependencies that I have chosen. So just to reiterate, we've got Spring Boot DevTools, Lombok, Spring Web, Timeleaf, Spring Data JPA, H2 Database, and Validation, okay? So, once you've got all of that and everything filled out, as I do, go ahead and click the Generate button. And that is going to generate the project, zip it up into a zip file, and then download it to our computer. So the next step is to unzip that file. In most cases, it will probably have downloaded into your downloads folder. Feel free to move that to wherever you like. So wherever you have been writing your code throughout this project, you may wanna move that zip file or the unzipped version of it into whatever that folder is, okay? So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, so I went ahead and copied my peopledb-web.zip file into the idea projects folder on my computer. That's where most of my projects that I've been working on with you guys live. You can, again, though, you can put yours wherever you like. And then I went ahead and unzipped it as well. 
on on Mac at least, you can just double click that zip file and unzip it. Um, probably on Windows, you can do that in the same way as well. So hopefully you shouldn't have any trouble with that. Okay, so now that you've gotten that done, let's meet up in the next lesson and we will write our first application. So I'll see you there. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content and you'd like to help me out, there are several ways you could do that. First, you can always click the like and subscribe. That'll help me out a lot. Additionally, another way you can help me out is to check the link in the description below. That'll link you to my website where you can find additional courses. And finally, for those of you who might be interested in starting a new career as a professional software developer, I offer a free PDF guide that will detail exactly how you can get started in this field with no college degree and no prior experience. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.